A situation that you come across fairly frequently is one where you have a large number of tasks that you need to accomplish and you want to distribute them across you know, well, different threads. And the actor model, you would distribute them across different actors. So instead of giving all of the tasks to one actor, one after the other, you might want to have a large number of actors and you distribute those tasks. The question is, how do you distribute those tasks? Because it's quite possible you have more tasks than you want to create actors. So how are you going to break up this problem? And that's something that happens frequently enough that the Akka library has added a way of doing this, and it's called routing. There are a number of different routers in the Akka libraries, and they're broken into two basic styles. One style is called groups, and the other style is called pools. And so you can see here in the Akka routing package, there are things like a broadcast group and a broadcast pool. There is a uh, round robin group and a round robin pool. There's a random group and a random pool. Uh, there's a down here, smallest mailbox pool. Some of them only have pools. Some of them are both groups and pools. There's also a um, a balancing pool. So we can run through these uh, as to how things are, are allocated. The first part the determines the allocation approach. So for example, a round robin gives the first task to the first actor, second task to the second actor, etc., etc., and then wraps back around to the beginning and just keeps giving things out to the, to the actors regardless of how efficiently those actors are, are solving uh, their, their tasks. So if an actor gets backed up, it's still going to keep getting uh, stuff sent to it. As you can probably guess, the random routers just pick a random actor and give the task to that random actor. The smallest mailbox pool gives the next task to the actor that has the smallest mailbox. So this one is going to kind of balance stuff out, but it's going to balance stuff out based upon the size of the mailbox. The balancing pool attempts to balance things out based upon how much uh, the load that that actor has and how much work it's, it's uh, set up with. So it should evenly distribute work um, between things. A broadcast uh, group or pool is a bit different from the others as opposed to taking the task and giving it to one of the actors. It's going to give the task to every actor that is part of that group or pool. Um, there is a uh, scatter gather first completed which is going to, once again, send out the task to, to everyone, but then only worry about the first one that finishes. And there is also a consistent hashing, uh, both group and pool. And what the consistent hashing does is this is for the situation where you need, um, some of the tasks are related. So you're getting tasks from different sources and so one actor needs to do all of the tasks associated with a particular source. Uh, and then some other actor could do things from a different source, but you need it so when the next task comes in from a source, you give it to the actor that has done the previous tasks. That's what the consistent hashing uh, would, would do for you. What's the difference between a group and a pool? In the group, you are able to add uh, your own actors in. So, so basically, it's not the supervisor for things, it's just distributing the work. The pool is going to create its own set of actors and it will be the supervisor for those actors. Um, and yeah, so in some ways you don't have to deal with as much stuff with the actors as the pool, when you use a pool, but you have less control than you would uh, as a group. We can look real close at, or real quickly at the balancing pool. When you create one, you just tell it how many, because it's a pool, it creates its own actor, uh, actors underneath it. You tell it how many actors you want to uh, create. And then when you send messages to that um, balancing pool, they will wind up being sent off 
to uh, the things that are underneath it. Now, we'll come back and we'll actually write a little bit of code that shows how you can use a balancing pool inside of a program.